Number 53 says evaluate. This is a uh, multi-step problem. It has uh, multiple operation symbols. It brings us to the idea of order of operations. You've probably learned about PEMDAS before. We have grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication and division. I just want you to know that multiplication and division are opposites of each other, which kind of makes them the same operation. Um, so they're interchangeable. Division can go before multiplication. So I guess if you want to call it PEDMIS, you can do that too. And then in the same token, we have um, the addition and subtraction are also reversible in the line. You can do uh, subtraction before addition. So let's look at this one here. Um, follow from left to right. We have addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. So we're going to have to be grouping this. I have uh, 3 times 2 and 8 divided by 4. We're going to have to do those operations from left to right. I don't touch the 2. Plus 3 times 2 is 6 minus 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now from left to right, I have a new line, addition and subtraction. Uh, we go 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 minus 2, final answer should be positive 6. Uh, it's difficult to see right now um, based on the equ equation editor. This is a fraction. These are all fractions right here, sorry. Um, a couple different ways you can do it. I'm going to keep it uh, the simpler way. It, it, you know, it might take a little bit longer, but I know uh, sometimes you uh, have a tendency to want to just do things um, <laughs> in, a, in a simpler fashion. So I'm going to go from left to right one uh, step at a time. We have a, a grouping of 3 fifths and 15 ninths. I can group those together. Um, I only know that because we can do some easy cross canceling with both of them. And then we can multiply um, the second set uh, Multiplication is commutative, so you could move these in any direction that you want as long as you keep uh, the numerators and denominators put. You don't want to be flipping those around here. All right, so uh, left to right here, we'll do some cancellation. Uh, let me rewrite this. Three-fifths multiplied by 15 ninths. Uh, Cross-canceling, 5 and 15, we got 1 and 3. 3 and 9, we also have 1 and 3. Let's get an answer to this. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. So the first one, we're going to get a 1 out of that. We'll take that answer later on after we solve the second set. So we have 7 halves multiplied by 4 over 21. Let's do some cross-canceling. We have 1 and 3 and... 1 and 2. Multiply straight across. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. All right, now we're going to take both of those answers and get a product from them. So 1 multiplied by 2 thirds. Well, 1 times 2 thirds is equal to reduced, simplified, final answer, 2 thirds. This is a radical symbol, the square root of 121. Uh, talking a little bit about the radical system, when uh, the symbol, when it doesn't have any number in this uh, little V looking portion of the radical symbol, um, it is a, a known square root. All right, so we're going to be taking the square root. So basically, what number times itself? is equal to 121. So the root would be 11, because 11 times itself is 121. Final answer, 11. If we want to get technical right now, we can add in the negative, because I also know that negative 11 multiplied by negative 11 is equal to a positive 121. I don't see that answer on your uh, review packet. Um, but I'd like you to know that for the future. Number 56, looking at the radical symbol, you see that we have a 3 on that inside V portion. You can have uh, many different numbers in there. And they're asking for the cubic root. So they want to know what 
multiplied by itself, multiplied by itself again, is equal to 125. All right, we have 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. Final answer, 5. Now, you're not going to be using the negative in this case, because if I had a negative times a negative times a negative, you're going to get a negative 125, and that is not going to work here. So final answer, 5. Number 57, find the exact. Exact is very important. We want the exact hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the um, line segment that is directly across from your 90 degree angle. So if we have a right triangle, we will be using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I don't see the Pythagorean theorem given to you, so I'm assuming you're going to have to have this memorized. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And very quickly, in a right triangle, however it is tilted or turned, the C is always called the hypotenuse, which is that... Uh, line segment across from the 90 degree angle and a and b are interchangeable because we are adding them so if you want to put the a on the left and the b on the bottom or vice versa that won't matter the main player here is the hypotenuse okay so if i have um, some given numbers here the answer must have a radical i'll show you that in a second if i have some given numbers here um, it says Legs of one centimeter and four centimeters. I did not do a great job of drawing this to scale. Um, these line segments almost look identical in size. Can I crank that down for you here a little bit? Let's see if I can do that without messing it up. You know what? Let's go with it. Um, it's a little bit closer to scale. I have um, a leg being one centimeter and the other leg being four centimeters and I want to know what the hypotenuse is uh, C so it's a basic substitution problem a is oops, a is one what are we going to do to it we're gonna square it plus B which is four what are we going to do to it we're gonna square it and that is equal to what we don't know 1 squared is 1 plus 4 squared is 16, and that is equal to C squared. Well, I don't want to know C squared. I want to know what C is equal to. So taking this up here, 1 plus 16 is 17 is equal to squared C. And to undo a square in math, if I'm solving for the variable, the opposite of squaring the variable is taking the root, the square root, of both sides. So it's kind of like what we do with solving equations. Whatever you do to one side, you do the same to the other. You're balancing it out. So the square root of c squared is what times itself is equal to c squared? Well, c. And what times itself is equal to 17? This is not a perfect square, so we cannot have a decimal as an answer. They want the exact with a radical symbol. So final answer, c is equal to the square root of 17. And if you think about the square root of 17, it is very close to, uh, what, 25, or on the other side of it, 9. So it's somewhere between, uh, what, 3 and 5? No, oh, it's closer to 16. OK, so let's, uh, let's look at that. We have the square root of 16, we have the square root of 17, and the square root of 25. So we know that it is approximately equal to 4. It's closer to 4 than it is to 5. A little bit more than 4. Now the hypotenuse, your C is always going to be the longest leg of your right triangle. And it is. It's... Uh, going to be a little bit more than four. Number 58, evaluate means solve. We've talked about fractions with exponents, so everyone inside of the parentheses is going to get raised to the third power. So we have three to the third over four to the third. Simplify, 
we have 27 over uh, 64. And if this is reducible or simplify, you can simplify it, do that. And I think it's already done for us. Number 59. Evaluate. This symbol is the absolute value. We've talked about absolute value being the distance away from zero on a number line. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative on the number line. Let's just look at it. We have zero in the center. We have negative three on the right. We could have positive three, I'm sorry, negative three on the left, positive three on the right. And basically what I wanna know is how many jumps away from zero is this integer inside? All right, so if I go to negative three, I go negative one, negative two, negative three. So it is one, two, three jumps away. Final answer, plain old positive three. All right, I'm going to rewrite this one. Uh, the equation editor had a little hiccup again. Look at that parenthesis on the right side. So it should like, look like the square root of negative 3 squared. Okay, so let's do the parentheses first. All right, so squaring the negative would make it positive. Squaring the, th the 3 would make it 9. So this is saying the square root of positive 9, which would equal... Uh, three and once again uh, it does not have this on your um, packet but the square root of nine can also be equal to the negative root negative three times negative three number 61 last one of this video now we have another order of operation problem we're going to take care of the grouping symbol first right in PEMDAS P represents parentheses, or uh, in other cases, uh, G, I call it gemdis sometimes, because they're talking about grouping symbols. So we're going to have negative 2 multiplied by, because it's touching this grouping symbol right here. This is a product. So negative 2 times, well, the absolute value of negative 4 is 4 jumps away from 0. And then we're going to add 3. Order of operations, multiply first, negative 2 times 4, and then we're going to add 3. Final answer should be negative 5. All right, that wraps up uh, this side of the page in your review packet for your placement exam. I will see you in class if you have any questions.